Welcome back to part two of our Mixed Media Butterfly project. Here's part of the border that we created in the first video, and using simple mixed media techniques, here's the depth and texture that we're going to create. Now I've cut down my border to two manageable pieces. This is the part that's gonna go on the card and it's about five and a half inches long. You can see I'm taking some of the translucent orange and this is a color by Schmincke. It's extremely transparent. I love this color. And we're gonna use this as a complementary color to the blue. Orange and blue are complementary colors. They are on the opposite ends of the color wheel. And you wanna kinda of keep that in mind when you're picking your colors for this project. Now, I did make one mistake here is I forgot to uh, lay a layer of water down first to my exterior. So I kinda of realized that about now and I was realizing, uh-oh, this is a little brighter than I had intended. Uh, where, why isn't it blending? Well, that's because it's dry. So I'm quickly adding just a super, super light wash. It's actually just whatever paint was in my brush and then I'm coming back in with some water, just plain old water, just to kind of prep my area. So uh, the second half goes exactly as intended, but you'll get the point here. Now I'm adding a stronger layer right around the butterflies, which is really what I had intended to do. And then from here, I'm gonna use a watery, just and to just kind of blend that outward. I really didn't want everything to be orange. I just wanted the brightest part of the orange to be right next to the blue and then just kind of fade on towards the end as we're gonna add uh, some ochre into the rest of the field there. So I'm just gonna kind of speed this up in different portions uh, so that you can kind of see what it is that I'm doing here. The key is to have kind of a soft look. We have a very soft look to our butterflies. I certainly didn't want any harsh lines or anything in this part. And being that it is five and a half inches long, you know, it's It's a substantial piece. So it was kind of hard to do it all at once because you don't really want it to start drying on you. So you have to kind of be, a, a, you know, cognizant of that. And so here we're just kind of working it and just trying to blend that out. I wanted really the most of the orange to be right up against the butterflies. I really didn't want it into the rest of the project. And don't worry about it being so dark orange because we're gonna actually come over this with a different color to kind of mute it out. But yet at the same time, I wanted it to kind of help provide that little pop of the butterflies and be something very interesting and unique and different. I'm just really assessing it and just kind of seeing where I might want to blend something out. Is something too strong? Do I need a little more color? And then we're gonna move on to the other side. Now here I am actually going to add one. This is what I intended to do to the other side. And you'll kind of notice the difference uh, at the end of this segment where you're seeing the top and the bottom. You'll see that the bottom uh, retains a little bit more light because once you add that staining color down, you know, if you do have a color that, even though being transparent does stain your paper a little bit, you can only get so much of the white back, you know, so it's okay, mistakes happen. Thankfully, this part of the project, we're adding a lot of texture and stencils and fun stuff. So, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't such a big deal. So here you can see, uh, now that we have the water down, when you're adding your orange, it starts to kind of bleed outward and that's really what I want. And then I'm just kind of help it along with a really wet brush and just kind of have that more natural blend towards the end versus something that's a little more forced. So we'll just do the same thing. And I'm of course gonna speed this up so that uh, you know you don't have to sit through every single tiny little thing. This video is starting to get a little long and I apologize about that, but it was a pretty, uh, pretty involved project but I had a lot of fun doing it. It was a very relaxing project. So I encourage you to try something like this. Just get lost in it, enjoy yourself. Uh, you know, don't worry about the little things as they happen along the way. Thankfully, by watching this, you'll avoid some of the mistakes, mistakes that I made. And you can see here, we really only have that color right up against the butterfly. And now I'm kind of working with my brush to kind of blend outward, you know, what we have. You can already see the difference between the top and the bottom. And I do want you to note that I did not dry the top. I wanted it to just kind of start to dry on its own. It was rather wet. But before we progress on to the next step, which is adding a little bit of ochre over it, uh, I still wanted that to be 
quite wet, or not wet, but damp, so that I could really work paint in very well. Just kind of uh, adding a little bit more where I felt it needed it and just kind of continuing to blend it out. But it ultimately it looks really good. Now, I do want you to be aware that on the bottom, I am gonna have a much thicker amount of color than I will at the top. Because in my head, the light was kind of coming from the top. So that means that you would have a bigger shadow underneath your butterflies to the bottom. So that's just kind of the way that I was thinking when I was uh, working the project. You can really notice the difference. And that's the other thing too, you can work, use your paper towel to kind of lift color out. It didn't really work on the top, but uh, it, it definitely uh, has a great effect there on the bottom. So I'm just kind of re-wetting this, just kind of working in my brush again, just kind of blending out that transition right there adding a little bit of water. This is just clean water that I'm doing, just kind of re-wetting it a little tiny bit before adding my ochre. Now, ochre is a really kind of, oh, almost like a neutral yellow. It's not a, it's not a vibrant yellow. It's a very natural color. And oh, we're gonna add uh, not too much of it. We're just gonna add a little bit of it. I got a little too much water in there, trying to lift a little bit of that out. And you can see certain spots, I felt like it needed a little tiny bit more of a punch. And I encourage you to also kind of stand up and step away from your project sometimes. It gives you a, a different perspective and sometimes even just taking a quick little break or just looking somewhere else, you know, helps your eyes to just kind of refocus. You can get a little too focused on some of the minutiae of a project sometimes and it doesn't really work in your favor. But look at it now, you can really kind of see those butterflies really popping off the page. I mean, that's really the magic that that orange does and that complementary color to that. You have other complementary colors. You have yellow and purple, green and red are complementary colors. Um, you know, there's lots of different things that you can do here. It's looking really good, I like it though. So now we're gonna add some of the ochre. So I have that, yeah, I don't know if you can see that kind of neutralish yellow dot there at the top of my palette. And that's my ochre. I bring some water into it. And I didn't want, uh, it's a very powerful color and it's not very translucent. So I just added some there and you can see that it's a nice complementary yellow to, the, to what we have going on here. And look at what a difference that makes. It's huge, huge difference. I love that yellow just blending into the orange. It was a really nice combination of colors. So you can see I'm just adding a little tiny bit to the very edge of the paper and then using a very wet paintbrush to just kind of blend that in. And that's looking really good. I'm not too worried about those little orange spots that I have at the bottom. It'll all mostly get covered up anyway. You can see here I have uh, four clean masks. I went ahead and because it's so easy to cut out with the butterfly dies, cut out four more uh, with some post-it notes. But this time I have the sticky where the antenna of the butterfly is, just so that it really kind of holds it in place. And that way I didn't get too much stamped right in that area. So uh, I have my masks down and now we're going to add some very cool things to the background. We're gonna add a little bit of stamping first and then we're gonna move on to some textures to just kind of create a very uh, nice mixed media feel. I have a script stamp as you see here and I'm gonna take some Distress Ground Espresso and we're just gonna get that inked up. And this is really the part that I wanted to do while the project was really still damp. So the top part was probably a little more damp than I actually wanted, but I really didn't want it to be dry. So I'm just randomly, you can see I'm just, because this is a clear stamp and it's bendy, I'm not even taking it off its sheet. It gives me a chance to just kind of bend it and manipulate it and put it exactly where I want it. I didn't want it everywhere. I just kind of wanted it in a few spots just to kind of lend a little something fun and interesting to certain areas of the project. You know, when you add stuff like this, you have my main focal point is obviously the butterflies. So I really don't want to overdo it with stencils and other textures and things. I want it to actually support my focal image. So that's why I don't have uh, a lot of script everywhere, just really in some spots. And if your project is too dry and you want it to have a little bit more of a wet look, after you stamp it, you can always run a slightly damp paintbrush over it if you're in the opposite position that I am. Now look at it. See, that's pretty cool. I love that. 
So now that we have all that great texture with the script stamp, we're going to cover our butterflies back up. And you know what, for this next part, because we're going to use various stencils, I'm going to go ahead and add a little removable adhesive to the back of my project before placing it down. Anytime you use stencils, you always want to make sure that both your project and the stencil are secured to your, to your work surface. It's too easy for them to move around otherwise. Now, first we're gonna use a little bit of bubble wrap, and this is probably something everybody has in their house, or if not, next time you order a package, just save a little. And I added a little bit of wild honey, which is kind of a warm orangey yellow color to it. And I'm just randomly placing down a few dots. I'm not doing it in the entire manner, same principle as with the script stamp. And you can see here, I'm just adding just a few here and there. And I'm just gonna lift up this corner here just so you can get a peek and look at that. I mean, it's great texture. You're just adding a little bit of depth, a little more interest, uh, some character to your project. So next up, we're gonna take something else. And this is just a mesh that I had um, left over from uh, something that my dad had in his garage. And I'm gonna use this as a stencil. You I sure can find a grid stencil just like this. And I'm gonna use some of the Spiced Marmalade Distress Ink. And you can see there, it just gives that little tiny um, character and interest right through that. I'm not really picking colors that are going to be too in your face. It's just really something to just uh, place some interesting little um, texture in various spots. So we're just kind of going over that with the actual uh, sponge tool that I use and just going to pick it up and kind of move it around and see where I need it. I don't have it everywhere. And you know what? It's not even something that you can fully see in every single spot on the final project. But again, this is just layering up different textures just to kind of help create a little bit more depth. And this is really partly what makes this a mixed media project. You're using stencils, you're using distress ink, we've got watercolor, we've got a lot of different things going on, stamps, etc. I'm just gonna add it with a little bit of antique linen and that's a really light color. I really, again, did not want to be in your face with a lot of the different designs, especially since I was using so many different ones. I just wanted to add just that little tiny bit. So I'm gonna place a couple of these little diamonds down a little bit here and there. So as you can see, I'm just lifting this up and just kind of checking it, seeing where it is. It just has that little tiny interesting bit of character. And look at that. I mean, this contrast between uh, the blue and the background and now all the stencils, I mean, it's really cool. It's really starting to develop into something special and I really, I really like this project. We do have a little ways to go. We have a lot of muted colors and I'm sure you've noticed that, but our final project has a little bit more depth in it. But before we get to that, we're just gonna add a, just a little bit more detail here and we're just gonna shift our stencil, go into the pocket, that kind of oval there, protect our project with a paper towel because remember those masks were removed and just add a little more there. So now that we have all our detail, I mean, it really looks great. I love it. Just a little bit of fun here and there. Um, it just provides a little more character and interest to our card. We're gonna go back to the bubble wrap and we're gonna go back to the uh, ground espresso and just gonna kind of lay down a few little dots. I don't wanna overdo it, just a little bit here and there, just kind of providing something a little bit different and that's a little bit more of a contrast to all those uh, neutral and complementary colors that we had put down. You want to definitely remember to cover your butterflies up. It's probably one of the most common mistakes when you're working with a mask project like this is to you kind of get lost in the moment and you forget to throw your masks back on so uh, just be mindful of that and we're just gonna like I said randomly just pop down a few of those uh, darker spots there and I had to kind of really press hard with some of them and just get a little more ink there. But I think you'll agree with me that it kind of adds a little bit more to it rather than keeping it so monochromatic, you know, with all the neutral yellows and uh, orangish yellows. It's nice to have a little bit of the contrast in there, but I didn't want to take too many colors because uh, I also already have a lot going on there. So now that we have that removed, I mean, look at that. That's great. I love that. So now we just have to take it to another level. And what I mean by that is we're going to now work on the orange border that is around the butterflies. So 
So we have this really nice orange border which provides a nice complementary color to the blues that we have on the butterfly wings. But now I really want to tone it down a little bit. It's just a little too orange and too in your face. It's just too big of a contrast. So to do that I took some of the ground espresso and I just am using an aqua brush and this is by Pentel this brush and just wanted to get it to have a really light I just kind of dip that quickly into a glass of water you can always squeeze the handle I use a glass of water also at the same time just putting a light coating over the orange and what this is doing is kind of grunging it up a little bit kind of making it a little uh, dirty but that's actually uh, a good thing for this project because that's kind of the tone that we have in the background and so you can see that I'm just kind of laying a little bit of that brown directly over that orange there all along the base and then you can also use your brush to kind of blend it outward now you want to be careful because you don't want to blend too much outward and you don't want to add too much excess water because we have a lot of uh, distress going on there as well with the stamping and the stenciling and you don't want to undo everything that you have remember that distress ink the ranger distress ink um, has a lot of few so anytime that water comes in contact with it it kind of reactivates it so you can in a sense wash away everything you did but look at that that looks great doesn't it now you can also real I blah, 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 blah. want you to also notice here now we're working on the bottom first and the bottom is going to have a much thicker shadow we talked about that earlier in the project uh, than the top because uh, this to me the light again is coming from the top of the project so you would have a bigger thicker shadow there towards the bottom so now flipping it around and you can really kind of see the effect on the reverse side there versus the top we're just going to add a real light layer here along you can see that I pulled just even just a little tiny bit off to the side I'm just making it even a little bit more muted you can uh, add your excess water to your distress ink on your craft mat and that gives you a way of kind of watering down the tone of the hue and that is, do that before you get to your project rather than working at it on your project you can also use a piece of scrap watercolor paper to test out the strength before adding it as well I mean look at that it looks awesome I love it it's just kind of blending it out a little bit there but it looks really good it really adds a lot and now those butterflies are really kind of lifted and almost like jumping off the page or swirling left to right however you want to look at it or interpret it but it looks really good so now looking at the project it's looking pretty good but I still feel like it needs just a little something extra so I'm taking my paints back out and here I have a little bit of Payne's gray actually this is burnt sienna and Payne's gray so I'm just gonna mix the two so that I get a really really deep deep coming to brown not quite black but kind of uh, almost on its way so uh, now we've got a pretty good sized paintbrush and we're gonna do a little bit of um, flicking here or a little bit of splats whatever some now we're gonna add some splats to our project so just uh, do it a little bit for, far away from your project you don't want to be too close and you don't want to add too many just a little bit here or there and that's just really gonna give you that little something else to me sometimes it really adds a lot to the project of course I by accident got too close and actually touched the project with my brush so you can see I have that really big one off to the left um, but thankfully these are extremely wet so you can kind of play with something if you do mess up so now I'm gonna really try to fix that <laughs> it was starting to bug me the more I looked at it I mean the project looks great details sometimes I don't know they get me a little bit I don't know about you so I'm gonna try and remove it with a clean water brush a dry brush and just kind of lift some of it out and it didn't quite work so how do we fix that well we just put another little uh, dot there so back out with the bubble wrap a little bit more espresso and there you go fixed gotta love that so next up we're going to add a border to our project because I want to tie this all in and I want the viewer to really be drawn into the scene so the best way to do that is to frame it so we're gonna take some of our distress ink and a, a small sponge tool and we're just going to add a quick little border now before you do that you definitely want to clean up your workspace you have some wet paint there and you don't want to have that get into your project so I have some ground espresso distress ink 
and I'm going to sponge a very light border going all the way around and I want to concentrate a little bit on the edges making it look a little bit more like a frame. And then when we're done with this we're going to also edge our project in soot black and those two colors together are really going to help uh, give a little something extra to the project. It's really a finishing touch that I do a lot and you'll see in a lot of different mixed media or art pieces. So you can really see how by adding that frame it's really taken this to a different place and uh, it really has a nice finished quality to it. Uh, when you are spon sponging you want to keep it light and you want to edge your project uh, definitely perpendicular to your paper. You can see it's not a very clean project. It's a very messy project. My fingers get quite dirty. You want to make sure to thoroughly dry it before adding it to any cardstock. Also you're just going to continue to get that ink on your fingers as well. So to complete this card you can see that I matted it onto a black piece of cardstock. I left an eighth of an inch border just to the top and bottom of it and I'm going to secure this down after I've gone ahead and stamped my sentiment from the Doodle Flowers set by Happy Little Stampers. I love the script kind of like handwritten font in this set. It's a brand new set but definitely check it out. It's got great fonts in it. And uh, so I'm using the sentiment sending hugs and then I'm just gonna glue this down right here and I was looking at it and it really is great I love it but it needed just that little finishing touch so a little bit of paper piercing here at the top and then we're all set so I hope you enjoyed this project thanks so much for sticking with me all the way to the end if you did and uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel uh, if you want to see more great videos in the future. I have some great close-ups right here. Enjoy those. And if you want to see the written instructions, be sure to check out the blog as well. Thanks so much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you next time around. Keep those fingers inky. Bye-bye.